If you want to stop being tired all the time, you need to activate the anti-tiredness neurotransmitter. But first, let's answer a couple questions like, how do we stay awake for nine days straight? This is exactly what a Tendai monk of Japan did. In October 2015, Kamahori Kolgen completed an endurance test called Doiri. For nine days straight, he didn't eat anything and he didn't sleep, a feat that was broadcasted on Japanese television. But here's what I'm wondering. Did the not eating make it easier or harder to stay awake for over a week? Imagine this, a group of researchers are trying to figure out how to keep you awake and alert despite many hours of sleep deprivation. They've been running a bunch of short-term memory tasks on you to get an idea of how your brain is functioning with and without sleep. Then after 36 hours of sleep deprivation, they spray something in your nose and run the tests again. Somehow, despite all your sleep deprivation, you were able to perform even better than you did when you were fully rested. All thanks to this nasal spray. Well, in 2007, researchers found that when they sprayed a peptide called Orexin A in 30 to 36 hour sleep deprived rhesus monkeys' noses, their cognitive function appeared to be even better than when they were fully rested. Orexin A is in fact a peptide slash neurotransmitter that our bodies release naturally in certain conditions. So it can give us some hints on how to have more energy throughout the day. You've probably heard by now about all kinds of hormones and neurotransmitters. But what about anti-tiredness? What's the alertness neurotransmitter? Well, if something is making you more alert, it's probably increasing orexin or increasing orexin signaling. An obvious but very good way to having more energy is to get some exercise. And one of the effects of exercise on your body is it increases orexin. Orexin levels in the cerebrospinal fluid of rats, dogs, and cats and orexin levels in the blood of humans have all been found to increase after exercise. In fact, these researchers propose that orexin A is one of the reason for the many benefits to cognition we see from exercise. The researchers have found that 20 minutes on a treadmill gives the brain as good a boost in working memory as a cup of coffee. Speaking of coffee, one of the effects of caffeine is it activates orexin neurons. On the other hand, the medication Suvorexant is an orexin blocker that is intended to help insomniacs sleep. Narcolepsy is a frightening condition where people suffer intense attacks of daytime drowsiness to the point where they can even fall asleep standing up. This 2011 paper in Frontiers in Neurology explains that narcolepsy is essentially a deficiency in orexin. In fact, the intended purpose of modafinil is to treat narcolepsy. If you're a college student, you've probably heard about modafinil. This is apparently the hot new drug to help students focus on their studies and stay awake. Modafinil does a couple things to brain chemistry, but one thing is it activates orexin neurons. Okay, I'm not recommending you go out and get some modafinil. Let's talk about natural ways to be more alert. Scientists know of a simple intervention that consistently increases orexin signaling and makes animals more alert. That intervention is fasting. Food deprivation seems to consistently increase orexin signaling and alertness in animals and primates. And if you destroy orexin neurons in mice, fasting won't make them more alert. And yes, fasting has been found to make humans more alert as well. So unfortunately, more food seems to make us tired. If you've had a big bowl of pasta at lunch and found yourself struggling to stay awake at your desk or you've simply attended any Thanksgiving dinner, You'd know this already. Had several meals and lapsed into a food coma. Now, we have to eat sometime, but we've been told to be eating all the time. Here at the firehouse, we always try to sit down and eat three square meals. First, it was three square meals a day. Now it's three meals and snacks. The concept of eating frequent small meals is really key to not only losing weight, but to maintaining weight. According to work done by Sachin Panda and Shubraz Gill, the average American's eating window is 15 hours. That means they're eating pretty much right when they wake up, up until right before they go to bed. No wonder people are wondering why they're exhausted throughout the day. We're constantly eating and constantly lowering our erection. For a very long time, I was consistently eating one meal a day. It was nice to lose a lot of weight, but my favorite thing about it was I had way more energy and was much more focused throughout the day. When I finally ate my huge meal, sure I would feel sleepy and sluggish, but that was around 6 p.m. when I was already done with all my work. 
eating once a day isn't realistic or maybe even desirable for most people. So when we do eat, what can we eat to not deplete our orexin so much? Well, let's take a look at this quote from this study. It says, Moreover, orexin A release is stimulated by low glucose, similar to glucagon secretion, and inhibited by high glucose. Fasting increases plasma orexin A. Essentially, they're saying orexin is quite sensitive to carbohydrate consumption. Basically, if you're eating carbohydrates, you're inhibiting orexin and you can expect to be less alert. Fasting increases orexin A, and glucagon is a hormone usually released when fasting, so it makes sense that glucagon secretion increases orexin A. And eating carbohydrate suppresses glucagon. This echoes James McDonald's explanation for why we're so sleepy after Thanksgiving dinner. It's not the tryptophan in the turkey, it's insulin inhibiting orexin, and this insulin is released in response to eating large amounts of carbohydrate-rich foods. Interestingly, one small study had narcolepsy patients do a very low-carb ketogenic diet, and these patients did see some modest improvements in their daytime sleepiness. Now, as we're about to see, this is not to say that everyone who eats carbs is going to be sleepy all the time, or you can't have carbs in your diet and stay focused throughout the day. Look at bodybuilders, for example. They don't strike me as particularly sluggish or tired people, yet they eat plenty of carbs. About 60 grams of carbs coming from grits. Though they track their macros and stay lean, and eat tons of protein. What's interesting is there's some evidence that protein has the opposite effect to carbs. This study suggests that the orexin system is actually stimulated by the amino acids in protein. In fact, it even suggests that protein can blunt the orexin inhibiting effect of glucose, meaning you shouldn't be as tired if you eat some protein with your carbs. Ironically, when students pull all-nighters, they usually reach for comforting snacks that are pretty much just carbs and no protein. My favorite all-nighter snacks as a university student were Pringles, these chocolate cracker stick things, and gummy bears. So this brings us back to narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is curiously associated with type 2 diabetes and obesity. In fact, obesity has been found to affect over 50% of children with narcolepsy. Well, you might think in people with a disorder where they are struck with intense bouts of daytime sleepiness, they wouldn't want to go out and exercise, but could it have something to do with orexin? Well, in a presentation by Amber O'Hearn, someone I've interviewed on the channel before, she points out that several lines of research show that there's a connection between sleep and weight gain. Basically, if you're losing weight, you sleep less. If you're gaining weight, you sleep more. And this study suggests that obesity is associated with low levels of orexin. And when people lose weight, their orexin goes up. This might be obvious, but if you're feeling more fatigued than usual, it might be a sign that you're gaining weight. And if you want to be more alert throughout the day, maybe you could stand to lose a few pounds. Well, that's easy for you to say, you preachy egg-headed institute guy. I've experienced this myself. When I first started eating a low-carb keto diet, I quickly felt like I had much more stable energy throughout the day. But I started to push it by having two butter coffees in the morning and eight macadamia nuts by the handful, and my feeling more and more sluggish woke me up to the fact that I was putting on weight. Oh, Marge, how could you let me let myself go like this? Me? I'm not the one who puts butter in your coffee. Knowing how alertness works should give you some insights into how to eat and when to eat if you want to maintain your energy and your focus. Recently, I was listening to neuroscientist Andrew Huberman on the Tim Ferriss podcast, and he says he doesn't eat any carbs until nighttime, and he eats this way because he found it has him sleep really well. This totally makes sense if you look at how orexin works. Going back to Kamahodi Kogan, perhaps the orexin increase from fasting and losing weight made his nine-day no-sleep ordeal a little easier. However, to be honest, I imagine his success was due to the superhuman mental toughness he developed over years of training. Because after all, he wasn't actually supposed to drink anything either. Which I can't imagine would have done anything for him other than make him miserable. Now, orexin isn't the entire story behind alertness. Things like catecholamines and effects on the sympathetic nervous system could also explain the alertness experience from fasting, for example. If you're still feeling tired even though you're not gaining weight, you're not eating an excessive amount of carbs or calories, and you're getting enough protein at your meals, some other things to think about for now are some nutrient deficiencies, for example, folate, vitamin B12, or iron, can leave you fatigued. 
Now, fasting making people more alert may seem counterintuitive because some people do feel fatigued and less energetic than usual when fasting, especially if they're doing fasts that last longer than 24 hours. But that can sometimes be due to low electrolytes and especially low sodium, as in low salt. When we eat really low carb, and especially when we fast, our insulin levels drop, and this has the kidneys excrete sodium. So if you don't replace that sodium, you can feel quite tired and lethargic. Also, caffeine is a diuretic which will have you excrete sodium, so if you're drinking lots of caffeine, you might want to try upping your salt intake. And if you're fasting and drinking caffeine, you'll really want to be replacing your salt. Another huge factor to having more energy throughout the day is optimizing your sleep. Not just the length of your sleep, but other things like the time you go to sleep matters. The best time to have the most refreshing sleep is a couple hours after sunset, which would be around 10 p.m. for most people. Also, you don't want to look at blue light before going to bed, and you'll want to try and wake up around the same time each morning to set a good circadian rhythm. You also don't want to drink caffeine 8 hours before you go to bed, as caffeine takes quite a while to metabolize, so it can interfere with sleep. Let's try the audience. Let's go with you. Uh, let's see what they say. We need your help, audience. But I'm curious to hear about you guys. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you do to maintain good energy levels throughout the day. This video was sponsored by KiwiCo. KiwiCo is an education company that provides hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM. They offer 8 subscription lines so any age group can learn about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. The boxes come with kid-friendly instructions, a fun and educational magazine on the boxes theme, and it has all the supplies necessary to complete the project. And even if you don't have kids yourself, Kibiko ships to 40 countries, so no matter where your nieces or nephews or grandchildren are, you can get them a Kiwiko box to encourage them to develop the problem-solving skills necessary to one day invent an orexin-based nasal spray so we can finally have a reasonable alternative to caffeine. Kiwiko is now offering 50% off your first month of any crate, so head on over to kiwiko.com slash what I've learned to check it out.